Anaheim police are bracing for possible violence as more rallies are planned to protest last week's two deadly officer involved shootings. Now, those protests are scheduled to take place here in front of the Anaheim police station later this evening, and protests took place earlier today in front of Disneyland Resort. And if you look behind me, you can see the extent to which the Anaheim PD is preparing themselves for violent protests. They've set up these barricades here. These are called water buffaloes by the fire department. They're filled with water and they're almost unmovable. And if you look across the street, you can see that neighboring businesses and residents have completely boarded up their windows with plywood. For the fifth night in a row, chaos and violence on the streets of Anaheim. Hundreds of protesters clashed with police. Dozens of arrests were made. The unrest began last Saturday after police shot and killed 25-year-old Manuel Diaz, a suspected gang member who witnesses say was unarmed. As Diaz lay near death on an apartment lawn, outraged neighbors confronted officers, allegedly throwing rocks and bottles. Then, chaos. Police fired rubber bullets into the crowd of parents, children, and angry residents. Then, one officer lost control of a police dog, which attacked a man trying to shield his child. In a dramatic turn of events, on Sunday, another shooting. 21-year-old Joel Acevedo shot and killed after he fired at officers during a foot chase. That's when tensions reached a boiling point, sparking a week of violent protest, with more than 200 additional officers called in to restore order. Our job isn't to stand back in the back and let anarchists or, or rioters damage property and injure people. What began as outrage over officers' use of deadly force has evolved into a growing chorus for political change. It's an outcry and it's, I don't understand it. We want answers and I don't know why they had to go to the, such an extreme and use excessive force. It's a shame. Today, calmer demonstrations in front of Disneyland, with many tourists caught off guard by the protests. It was a bit of a surprise because when we visit Disneyland, we don't expect to be dealing with protesters uh, outside the gates. I'm not sure what Disney has to do with, with what's going on. With millions of visitors each year, Disneyland is the financial backbone of Anaheim. And where there's money, there's power. You have to understand that the city is owned by Disney Corporation, so it's always relevant if you have a major social issue or social problem to address Disney because Anaheim is Disney Inc. Protesters insist that Anaheim City Council favors the tourism industry over its predominantly Hispanic community. Here in the city of Anaheim, we are a diverse population, and as you can tell, there's a there, it's many people of color here that we're all coming together because we're tired. We're tired of seeing it being controlled by corporate and it wants to come back to the people. Anaheim is the largest city in California that still has an at-large voting system. Not all, but much of Anaheim's political power is concentrated in the eastern hillside neighborhoods, home to four out of five city council members. Anaheim is a majority Latino city. There are zero Latino city council members. There are no city council representatives from outside of the rich white areas. Which residents say prevents them from electing city council members of their choice. The ACLU and other community groups have filed a lawsuit alleging that the current election system violates the California Voting Rights Act by diluting Latino influence. Why do you have to have police brutality to maintain the status quo, right? What is the status quo? Massive inequality, structural inequality. But with more protests on the horizon, tensions remain high amongst residents and police in this tale of two cities. Reporting from Anaheim, I'm John Finolio.